Oh, all right, good evening. Welcome to uh, lecture video three uh, in our special relativity topic. Um, in this one, we are going to look at the syllabus criteria of explain the concept of simultaneity. So you need to be able to explain uh, what does it mean for two things to be simultaneous. Now, we know what simultaneous means to us in that we, we perceive it happening at the same time. Uh, perhaps you're standing somewhere and you see two things happen uh, so perhaps two people drop their books at the same time and you see it happen at the same time but maybe you see it happen at the same time but you don't hear the sound reach at the same time um, perhaps if you're one, one the first person is a little bit further away uh, perhaps one person is next to you and the other is at the other end of the oval uh, now you'd be able to see both of those things happen to you at the same time. The distance is quite small, uh, but if you know the oval's 200 or so meters long, they might look different in terms of almost nearly a second. Um, uh, sorry, they might hear sound different in nearly almost a second. So, with simultaneity, we ask the question: What does it mean to be simultaneous? What does it mean to be simultaneous? So this is a word we should be able to define, uh, we should be able to describe, uh, and then we should be able to explain it in, in using those three levels of cognitive verbs. Now there's a very good definition in the textbook, so I'm going to read that. Simultaneity can be defined as, or thus, two events are simultaneous in a given reference frame if light signals from the events reach an observer who is midway between them at the same time. I mean, that is what we, we're kind of used to, but now we're defining it in terms of light, uh, because light, remember, moves at the same speed no matter what reference frame we're in. Uh, however, sound does not move at the same reference frame, uh, move at the same no matter what reference frame. Uh, if you were moving uh, uh, faster than sound, then sound from one point would never catch up to you. To you, the sound would be moving away at a certain speed, but light is always going to move at that same speed no matter what. Um, if we're in the middle, well, that makes sense to us that, you know, if we are in the middle of two things uh, and two things are moving with speed and so the distance is the same, then the time should be the same. Uh, let's draw that out. So if you are standing here in the middle uh, and we have event A and event B over here, A and B, well, if this distance, the distance of A, okay, if the size of the distance of displacement of A equals the size of the displacement of B well then uh, and the velocity you know from A equals the velocity from B or the magnitude because we've got to worry about directions here well being as we know our, our velocity equation velocity equals displacement over time uh, well that stands to reason that the time uh, for A should equal the time for B because they would have happened they've gone the same velocity and they've gone the same a distance then the time should be the same um, then that should establish that well we are in the middle um, the on the same velocity uh, so that's why we use light uh, therefore it has taken the same time so therefore if they're taking the same time it is simultaneous okay, so simultaneous simultaneity is something that you are pretty already understand to a fair extent but it's a little bit harder for you to put into um, uh, clarity of words. Now, we are used to everything sort of being in the one reference frame of, you know, relative to the Earth. That's, that's our reference frame that we take as our day-to-day -day life. That's classical relativity. Um, but we want to look at what happens with some other reference frames in order to see some weird things. And uh, Einstein did some really interesting stuff with this, um, with what's called a Gedanken. I'll write that word down. Gedank. Double check the spelling. I, I cannot spell German. Uh, G U U Gedank. Okay, uh, and it means thought experiment. Uh, and the problem is, well, it's a bit hard to do some of these things. Um, in the lab, especially in the high school lab, so we have to sort of deal with well, let's take some very um, simple starting points and go with some predictions um, based off of logic. 
Uh, and, and this is how he came up with a lot of his ideas on special relativity, just by sitting there and thinking through things, uh, by basing his uh, by observations and thinking about some of the uh, the assumptions that he had to make. Uh, so the first paradox and one of the criterion for the syllabus uh, is that you are at the very last one explain paradoxical scenarios such as the twins paradox flashlights on a train and the ladder in the barn paradox so we're going to deal with the flashlights on the train paradox right now uh, and i will do another video down the track that just talks about these three paradoxes but um this is the first sort of paradox that comes up and this is on page 258 of your unit 3 slash unit 4 text uh, so um, I've covered this in class when we we're talking about reference framing uh, however and neurons and toys frames but let's have a look at it we have a train we have a person on the train and he has a light that goes in two directions so it goes forwards and it goes backwards and we have an observer off the train who's just standing there. So this train is moving in this direction. When the light hits the end, it sets off a signal. So it might open it. So the example in the text is that it uses opening a door. Um, we could say, oh, it turns on a light at the top of the, the train. Or we could say that it um, sets off a firework. There's a whole bunch of different ways that people have explained this. So. We have this person in the middle, uh, so let's see, let's draw that. Um, distance A. I know my picture is not to scale, but uh, we're going to write the statement distance A equals distance B. That's how I get around my poor drawings. Um, and the light goes into both directions. Now, the light here happens when these two people are in line with each other. This person is in moving at constant speed can't feel any acceleration. If you are on an, uh, an object moving at constant speed, you will not be able to tell that you're on something moving unless there are accelerations happening. If you're in, in an enclosed box and everything is moving smoothly, you will not be able to feel it. So this person inside the box, effectively to him, is staying still. He has no perception that he's moving in any way, shape or form. He's just there, turns on his light. Now, in his reference frame, because remember the second postulate of special relativity, light travels at the speed of light. So, if he's in the middle, then the light should travel to one end and the other end, and will trigger the event at each end. The distance is the same, the velocity of light is the same, the speed of light is the same, so the time must be the same. So, to, we'll call him um, uh, Observer A, and we'll call him Observer A. So, Observer A sees both doors are uh, open, or let's write that, doors open, or they could say lights, trigger, but he sees the two signals, and well to him he would see them simultaneously, in his reference frame it happens simultaneously. But let's think about observer B. Observer B this light beam is traveling this way at the speed of light in his reference frame and this light beam is traveling this way at the speed of light in his reference frame however this signal this signal receiver here is also traveling to the right and this signal receiver is also traveling to the right so this by the time this this light ray has traveled a certain distance so let's do this again by the time is our person the train is moving very fast just to make this a bit easier for us to draw um, so by the time the train has traveled to here um, this one would have reached that this distance um, I'll just draw hang on, I'll draw where it was okay. Um, th this door has moved closer to the person and so the light has hit it first. Light is certainly moving to the left in, in terms of uh, our gentleman B here, his reference frame, um, but also the, the signal has moved towards it. That's not a problem. That doesn't mean that the speed of light is moving at a, um, 
a faster speed, it just means the two things are coming together. That's perfectly fine, that's not a problem. Um, we're not breaking the cosmic speed limit here by any chance. And so he would see this light trigger first. But in this time, this one has also gone a distance, but the wall is now further away. It hasn't hit it. So he would not see this light turn on. He would then see this light turn on a little bit later. So B, however it B sees left and right door open. Okay, or left and right light, or whatever signal that we use, you would see the left one first and the right one first. Well, who's correct? I mean, one person's seen these two things happen at the same time, one person's seen these two things happen um, uh, on different times. Right? The thing is, both are correct. We are very used to things happening uh, at such small distances that the idea that light takes time to travel to us is not a um, easy to imagine thing. But if we didn't do this with light, if instead we thought about this with sound, this would be a lot easier because you see things and then hear things later quite often. Um, if I see uh, an explosion happen at a distance, I will see the light and then it will take time for the sound. If I see a lightning bolt, I'll see the light, and it will take time for the sound. Um, I could see two lightning bolts at the same time, and then I could hear one sound, and then the other sound, and that would tell me, oh, they're different distances away from me. Uh, we're used to this, uh, this idea. Okay? So, simultaneity is the idea that two things happen in the same, uh, in the same reference frame at the same time if you are halfway between them. That's how we know if something is simultaneous. However, two things that are simultaneous in one reference frame might not be simultaneous in another reference frame. There is no preferred reference frame. All the laws of physics are the same no matter what reference frame we're in. Um, I would certainly recommend having a look through uh, all the questions at the end of chapter 9.3 and I'll give you some time to work on this in class before we move on to the next topic because it's fairly important that we, we wrap our head around and go into it deeply. It's a fairly straightforward idea but we want to explore it a bit more. Um, however, as far as the topic goes, it's a very straightforward thing. So, uh, the requirement from the syllabus is that you can explain the idea of simultaneity. If you can do that, then you have achieved the objective for this criterion, uh, and then we can move on to the next. This is the end of classical relativity, where we've talked about reference frames, uh, we've talked about relative motion, and we've talked about simultaneity. On the next stuff, we start looking at um, light, and then we start looking at length and momentum and some of these effects on motion uh, that going very, very fast actually causes. Thanks for listening, guys. I uh, will see you in class.